Korea. It's not only America whose patience is running dry on North Korea and Kim Jong-un. Russia has also had enough of their aggression. Today the Daily Caller details of Russia's statements were released, including a threat from Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov. Advertisement, in a clear statement Monday, Ryabkov warned the Hermit Kingdom that if it continues on the path it's on there could be a catastrophic conflict. At the same time, Ryabkov urged smarter and stronger nations to show restraint toward North Korea right now. Clearly this is a reference to the United States and EU. Speaking further, Ryabkov said that any miscalculation may lead to a political or military outbreak, rather than to a nuclear test like the one recently conducted, which actually reflects the deteriorating situation in Northeast Asia. In other words, if North Korea keeps playing with fire it's going to get burned. Advertisement, badly. If Kim Jong-un doesn't respect the United States, which he obviously doesn't, he should take it from Russia. Although Ryabkov was clear he believed only diplomatic approaches can solve the North Korean crisis, he is acknowledging a clear statement of fact. One wrong move and one big miscommunication and North Korea is in for exactly the kind of fire and fury that Trump promised. What do you think? Can Russia be a reliable ally in helping resolve the North Korean threat? Judge Janine pulls no punches in rent against James Comey. Judge Janine Pirro blasted Mr. Holier than thou James Comey this weekend on Fox News. And it was a sight to behold. Advertisement We all know that Judge Janine speaks her mind and then some. But this really cut to the chase. Former FBI Director Comey is a bit of a snake. It's hard to know what to think of the guy, exactly. He speaks out of both sides of his mouth and now new evidence has emerged that he gave a green light to Madam Corruption Hillary Clinton on using a prohibited email server before the investigation was even over. This is exactly the kind of dark deeds and insider crap we know is going on behind the scenes, but it's all coming to light now. Judge Janine thinks it is more than time to look into Comey for obstruction of justice, conspiracy, and perjury. Advertisement, she made a demand of the Department of Justice to, well, do its job. You know, what they're paid to do. No more cover-ups. No more rigged investigations. No more cutting organized criminal enterprises like the Clinton Foundation any slack, Judge Janine requested. Mr. Holier than thou James Comey is exactly representative of the swamp that Trump promised to drain. Drain the swamp. Investigate Comey. Sounds good to me. It sounds past due, actually. Watch the full video here. What do you think? Judge Janine has some pretty good points wouldn't you? Right after President Trump landed in Louisiana, he did something incredible. President Donald Trump and his wife Melania visited Texas where they met some of the Hurricane Harvey victims and served them food. After that, the couple went straight to Louisiana to express dear gratitude for the National Guard and Cajun Navy for helping out in Texas. According to Lutchman report, the president was not expecting to see what he saw when he arrived in Louisiana. There were rows of proud Americans cheering him on and showing plenty of gratitude for his arrival. They also cheered on the First Lady with numerous signs welcoming them. The National Guard also welcomed President Donald Trump. He wanted to show his gratitude for their hard work and that is exactly what he did. Although President Trump proved that he knows how to deal with the devastating effects of a natural disaster, the liberals are still attacking him. However, they should really open their eyes and see that Trump is not as bad as they think. The president also announced that he will donate million dollars of his personal funds to the victims of Hurricane Harvey. God bless. Breaking Sean Spicer Lands Lucrative New Job Sean Spicer, President Donald Trump's first press secretary, has just landed a new lucrative gig. Mr. Spicer who officially left the West Wing on August 31st has signed with Worldwide Speakers Group, a company that arranges paid speaking engagements for its roster of high-profile speakers. Advertisement, audiences around the world will benefit from the same candor, 
wood and insight that Spicer brought to the White House briefing room. Worldwide Speakers Group writes about Spicer in its marketing materials that were reviewed by Politico. A spokesman for Worldwide Speakers Group released a statement saying, We are thrilled to provide Sean for our major trade association, corporate, university and public lecture series customers around the world. With his well-known candor and extensive experience, Sean is uniquely qualified to help audiences understand how the political environment will impact them now and in the future. Worldwide Speakers Group did not say how much Spicer would be paid per speech and while Spicer refused to make a statement you know that he will be getting a pretty penny advertisement, and he deserves it. Sean is a good guy and did a good job in a very tough situation. Politico also is breaking the news that Sean already has one speaking gig lined up, in New York City on September 11th where he will be the main speaker at the annual conference of the investment bank Rodman and Renshaw. His profile page at Worldwide Speakers says, as a House of Representatives communicator, assistant U.S. Trade Representative, Republican National Committee Chief Strategist, and top advisor to presidential campaigns, Spicer discusses the people, philosophies and policies that matter most to the citizens of the U.S. and businesses around the world. Rumors are also flying that Sean is shopping a book and is talking to TV networks about a possible role as an on-air host. Good luck Sean you deserve the best. As President Trump went to personally thank Cajun Navy for helping out, he got surprise of lifetime. In Texas a few days ago we personally witnessed what kind of person President Trump actually is. Over there he met with survivors of the horrific storm, served them food, hugged them and gave them support in this difficult time. As he promised. Right after Texas he went to Louisiana in order to express his appreciation for the National Guard and Cajun Navy for helping out. He was left speechless after seeing what actually was happening over there. The Lutchman report found pictures of what happened. The president was not expecting to see what he saw when he arrived in Louisiana. There were rows of proud Americans cheering him on and showing plenty of gratitude for his arrival. They also cheered on the First Lady with numerous signs welcoming them. Take a look for yourself, the National Guard was present welcoming his arrival. The President wanted so bad to thank them for their hard work and that's exactly what he did. Everything that happened over there was indeed horrific. But, the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey won like this because President Trump responded to it. Trump is the opposite of everything that liberals are Cajun Navy's response to lifeless woman floating by melts down internet. Hurricane Harvey has been one of the most vicious natural disasters in U.S. history. Numerous deaths, destroyed homes, and uprooted families have been the norm in southeast Texas since the storm him. Of course, we have heroes like the Cajun Navy who decided to serve America in our time of need. Joshua Lincoln, Ricky Berrigan, and Donnie Davenport are all members of the Cajun Navy, which is volunteer only. They were traversing Louisiana roads and came across a woman floating face down in the water. Advertisement One of the volunteers believes that she was crossing the road and was caught in the current. Her body hit the boat. Lincoln said, she floated right to the boat. We jumped out and got her and gave her compressions right there in the water. We were holding her from behind. The Cajun Navy was on the job thanks to a Facebook post by Southeast Louisiana Storm Spotters. They wrote, Hang on Houston, assets from the Cajun Navy are en route. Houston area officials have given the Cajuns the green light to come in and assist with SAR efforts. The heroes did 15 chest compressions to bring the woman back to life. All seemed lost when they first saw her, but their quick thinking saved her life and truly served her family by saving this woman. Advertisement The woman's name was Wilma Ellis. According to Lincoln, Ellis woke up in a confused and afraid state. She wasn't aware of her surroundings. This is a story for the ages. When people think of hurricanes and their fierce, unforgiving destruction, we can think of people like the men who saved Wilma Ellis from this horrific disaster. The men ended up dropping Ellis off at a gas station near Tidwell Road and Parkway Forest Drive. She was left with a local businessman, 
who vowed to assist in reuniting Ellis with her family. What do you think of this amazing story? Former Republican Congressman gives Obama scorching lesson on DACA, you'll be nodding your head in agreement. The negative impact of former President Obama continues to be felt across America. We can all feel it and we're just glad President Trump is doing his best to start turning it around. Former Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz reached the end of his rope today on Fox and Friends, when he slammed Obama for his unconstitutional passage of DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. DACA is immigration legislation that gives de facto amnesty to illegal aliens who entered the United States as kids. As the Daily Caller points out, Chaffetz has a particular issue with the way Obama used an executive order to change immigration law and implement DACA. Trump is planning to end DACA because it is a loophole for illegal aliens. It offers the ability to work and stay in America to the children of parents who broke U.S. immigration law. Clayton Morris of Fox and Friends said ending DACA could be quite unethical because as part of passing it Obama's White House urged children of illegals to come forward and register for DACA benefits. As Chaffetz pointed out, however, Obama using executive action to force through DACA is basically overruling the law to suit his own desires. Advertisement, we're a nation of laws and that's the way it works in this country, Chaffetz explained. What do you think about Chaffetz's statements? How do you think Obama did the most damage to America during his terms in office?